missiles. <laughs> oh, God's children got missiles. They're getting bigger and they're short range more. These are the sort of the, the ones you know about and love to read about. But you can add that the most advanced missile that we've ever deployed was a Pershing II. It had a Mar. You go through the atmosphere, the, the warhead would come undone. It had little fins, it had terminal guidance, and it would go this way and that way. And boom. Very accurate. That was built in the 80s, actually, the 70s. In fact, Green River, Utah. The base is no longer. Let's see. <coughs> Russia has one, China has one, Iran has one, North Korea has one, South Korea has one, uh, India has one. No. Things are moving along here. Missile technology spreads. Now, it used to be that you used missiles to deliver nuclear warheads, and the reason why is the accuracy of the missiles wasn't very good. And so you made up for that by just destroying, over-destroying the area in hopes you'd hit the precise target you were interested in. So if you wanted to destroy an air base, you'd send two Scud-like missiles with their inaccuracy of a kilometer, and you put nuclear warheads on them. Now you send two accurate non-nuclear Missiles with submunitions and it costs something here. The Chinese are into this. Else. Here, you can see that the Chinese who actually stole uh, the Pershing 2 technology, the DF 21 is just an old Pershing 2 in many respects. They're connecting with overhead surveillance the ability to move, hit moving targets like ships. And certainly they can hit, you know, important bases like the long, etc. as the range gets better. Right, so now you can do with non-nuclear accurate missiles the strategic, destroy the strategic targets you used to have to use nuclear weapons. So missiles in and of themselves have become a strategic problem, whether they're nuclear or not. When was the last time we had controls over missiles? I remember that. I was in the U.S. Senate and I got to read the negotiating record and we debated a long time ago. Haven't bothered with that since. Maybe that has to be looked at. Now there's another uh, kind of, uh, well, what is our response to this problem? Our response to this problem is missile defenses. And we have terminal missile defenses like Patriot System. Uh, we have mid-course, uh, which is, in other words, the missile flies towards its target. The boost phase is literally when it looks like that. Mid-course is when it's in space, terminal, and it's coming back down in the atmosphere. Okay? And we have schemes to either use off-the-shelf technology from, like, General Atomics down the street. That's basically them. Or space-based systems that somehow would either send kinetic or, I think, a little more probable, I say lasers? I don't know. It's pretty hard to penetrate the atmosphere with lasers. I, I say this as somebody went through that debate in the 80s. I don't think anything, the laws of physics haven't changed, but, the, but you could have interceptors, kinetic interceptors. Anyway, so there is some discussion and interest in this. The Hill has mandated that money and studies be done to do the boost phase. And the reason why is it's easy to see because it's got that heat signature. It's uh, easy to hit because it's not moving very fast. And it's got all that fuel, so if you touch it, it'll blow up. It's a very sympathetic target. Now, if you can figure out how to do that, of course, that gets into it. Well, all right, the other response is, if they have missiles, you come back with missiles, too. Uh, this is the ICBM program, the low-yield weapon of the Poseidon, long-range stand-up weapon. And the argument is, well, we can deter their deterrent to deter us. Something. All right, so it worked. 
that, and then, oh, let's get some fancy stuff that flies five to ten times the speed of sound, hypersonics, make it either glide off of a ballistic missile or power. Now, a hypersonic is like that mark, except it stays in the atmosphere for more than 50% of its flight. Guess what? Not covered by any agreement. Because the only thing that's limited under INF are ballistic missiles, not hypersonics. They have to be you know, ballistic missiles for cruise missiles. And a hypersonic, instead of going like this, and then maybe a little bit of action at the end, it goes up and it stays in the atmosphere and then it comes down, so for more than 50%. Um, these are not covered yet. Not only that, the ability to defend against these right now, see that. Now, that said, I'm not sure they work yet, but they're coming, kind of like winter. Right? <laughs> Winter's here. All right. Now, having gone through these two things, I just want to say that these military responses alone may be necessary, but they are not sufficient. Why? Well, first of all, the missile defenses we have can't deal with hypersonics. Mm -hmm. Making so the missile defenses can be overwhelmed by their hypersonics, because guess what? China, Russia, India, France are all working on hypersonics themselves. Also, just numbers matter. If you get enough missiles, missile defenses aren't leveraged, at least not yet. The cost to kill an incoming warhead is much greater than the cost to come in to overwhelm the defense. So it pays to be offensive, it doesn't pay to be defensive. And it doesn't argue you shouldn't have missile defenses, it just argues you better hope the world's safe to have missile defenses, that there aren't that many missiles to begin with, right? Okay. Now, another little peculiarity is that goose phase, if you ever get it to work, uh, defenses, sounds terrific, except for one thing. You have to fly into the sovereign airspace of somebody to do the business of knocking that missile out. Well, if you're in a state of war, I guess that's fine. Are you? Do you want to set the president that, oh, well, we, if we want to go in and we feel threatened, well, the law of uh, self-defense allows us to just take a pop shot over somebody's sovereign airspace. Well, maybe it does, and, you know, the Addingtons and U's, you know who they are? Does anybody know who Addington or U is? Write those names down. Lawyers. Does anybody here know about the blog called Lawfare? You do. So type in those two names. Boom, they'll come up. Mr. Yu is at the University of California, Berkeley. Essentially, they make arguments that roughly work as follows. If we want it, it's legal. No? I mean, it's not quite that bad, but certainly for the presidency. Well, that's one way to go, but, you know, once you go that way, what happens to Cape Canaveral and, the, what is it, Vandenberg? What if somebody says, oh, okay, well, we'd like to take a couple of pot shots at you. Oh, that would not be good. As our president would say, that would be sad. So how do you deal with 